Hello and welcome back to the second part of this portrait drawing series with me, Ryan, on One Vanguard. If you haven't seen the first episode, please check that out first. Now, we've finished the face, so the hardest part is done. Let's now make a start on the hair. Starting at the top, gradually and very lightly start to put in some lines following the hair flow. You're going to cover all of the hair with these basic lines. Afterwards, these lines are going to disappear when we do the next layers, so they don't have to be too neat. They are merely there as a guide to indicate the direction and flow of the hair. To save some time, I'm going to speed through this first part. Okay, now that we've got some basic lines down, and now going and doing the second layer, adding darker tones to show where the um, shadows will be in the hair. With um, this, I'm starting off at the bottom of the hair first, because that's where the um, darker hair will be, because the light will catch at the top, and gradually it will fade down to dark at the bottom. So I'm starting at the bottom and I work my way up to, to light.
as you can see on this part of the hair, it's a large section, which I knew was going to be pretty dark. <clears throat> so I started to shade it in first to get a base tone, and then I'll add um, pencil strokes over top to pick out the individual hair. Um, this saves a lot of time rather than doing every individual strand. You can just get the base colour down first and then do lines on top. And again here, I'm starting off darker at the bottom, fading to light, and then where the hair is, uh, there's gaps in the hair, it's going to be really dark, but you still see some of the strands, so I'll still put the lines in, in between the hair. Also, with the hair, we're not doing every individual strand, that's just impossible. The idea is to build form, so you create the form of it, how it falls over the head, and if it's um, got volume in the hair, you need to create the volume with the shadow and shading, and then these are the first layers, and then for the, the final layer, you add texture to it, which is um, breaking up the solid objects with strands of, of lines of hair, and then also gaps in between the hair, breaking it up with the with texture, and then you're also going to get some um, flyaway hair, so hair that's coming off from the main form. Another really important thing to consider is you need to choose a photo which has <coughs> really good contrast in the hair, so you need to be able to have some really dark hair for the shadowing, and then um, also really light hair where the light is on it. So you need to have a good contrast between light and dark. And then this really um, brings out the 3D form and you can see the hair better. Rather than just flat looking hair with a small gradient between dark and light, this won't um, bring out the 3D form very well. Really pay attention and focus on getting the hair right. A lot of people just seem to uh, rush through the hair and just uh, draw lines going any which way. You need to make sure you keep referring back to the reference image and getting the hair flow right. It's um, a good idea to be more organic and free rather than straight and uh, rigid. <clears throat> the more organic the hair looks, the more realistic. Now that's the hair done, we'll now move on to the hands. This is using the same techniques as what we use on the skin for the face. Um, you start off gradually building up tone again and then blending it in with the tissue, keeping um, the light in the direction it needs to be. On the hands, difficulties might occur when um, you're trying to do the knuckles and the shading on there because it's quite subtle and if it goes too dark it's going to look odd and too light it's not going to be noticed and just like wouldn't, wouldn't look quite right. So you need to really pay attention to the way the light um, falls on these areas. It's also the attention to detail with all like the creases on the um, the joints and over the knuckles and then the really subtle changes in the skin tones the way the hands are positioned in this image are really quite 
um, hard to draw. It's not just um, your hand. It's uh, in a really odd position. So it's really important that it's drawn correctly. If you don't do this correctly, the, the hands won't look real and it's going to look really strange. Things to um, remember when drawing the hands in the, like this from the image is a perspective. Um, because it's not straight facing you, the hand flat, the uh, fingers, the one hand of the fingers is moving away from you, and the other hand, the fingers are coming closer to you. So it's going to be in different proportions than normal for this image. So when you're um, drawing the fingers which are closer to you, they're going to be coming larger than, than the rest of the hand, which may look odd at first when you're drawing it, but then once you do shade it in correctly, it's going to look right and in proportion with the rest then. Let me try and make that clearer for you, it's quite confusing. If you draw a square on a piece of paper, a, a perfect 90 degree square, and then you pick up the piece of paper and tilt it at an angle towards your face, you'll notice that the uh, top of the square is going to be um, wider than the bottom of the square. This is to do with perspective. So if you apply this same principle to when you're drawing the hand in the angle in which it is here, the fingers are going to be larger and wider than they actually are in real life. As you can see in the example, the square has completely changed until the, the actual shape is not a square anymore. <clears throat> so if you apply this basic idea of the square to the hand, and then it should be easier to work it out. If you're only just learning to do the hands, I wouldn't pick a position like this. Just try drawing it um, flat to start with, and then um, like grasping something, just really simple positions. And then once you're comfortable with drawing it like this, then start to go on to these difficult um, and more interesting positions, and more complicated. We've almost finished the hands now. If you made it this far, well done. <clears throat> We're pretty much 80% completed now. I'm just now adding the finishing touches to the hand. This is like uh, the final polish to make everything perfect. Neating everything, neating, neatening everything up and making everything sharper and clearer darkening things and adding extra light spots it's just to make sure it's like as best it can be uh, I hope you found the tutorials for the hand and hair useful I hope, I'm, I hope I've been able to um, help you in your own drawing skills and give you more confidence in drawing I just really want to encourage people that they can draw you just need to take time, it's it, uh, you don't become a good drawer overnight. It takes a lot of practice and dedication. So if you keep at it, you're going to get better. Let's end the video here now, and then I'll pick it up in the third episode. So join me next time when we'll be getting into the fabric on this drawing. The fabric can be quite hard because it's so uh, flowing and organic. You can have so many different folds and creases and the fabric can mould in different ways. So I'll um, next time we'll be teaching you how to do this properly. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.